This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. Did you know that we can represent any function as a sum of sine and cosine waves? A Fourier transform, FT, is a mathematical transform that decomposes functions into frequency components, which are represented by the output of the transform as a function of frequency. Most commonly, functions of time and or space are transformed, which will output a function depending on temporal frequency or spatial frequency, respectively. That process is also called analysis. An example application will be decomposing the waveform of a musical chord into terms of the intensity of its constituent pitches. Term Fourier transform refers to both the frequency domain representation and the mathematical operation that associates the frequency domain representation to a function of space or time. The Fourier transform of a function is a complex valid function representing the complex sinusoids that comprise the original function. For each frequency, the magnitude, absolute value of the complex value represents the amplitude of a constituent complex sinusoid with that frequency. And the argument of the complex value represents that complex sinusoid's phase offset. If a frequency is not present, the transform has value of zero for that frequency. The Fourier transform is not limited to functions of time, but the domain of the original function is commonly referred to as the time domain. The Fourier inversion theorem provides a synthesis process that recreates the original function from its frequency domain representation. Functions that are localized in the time domain have Fourier transforms that are spread out across the frequency domain and vice versa. A phenomenon known as uncertainty principle. The critical case for this principle is the Gaussian function of substantial importance in probability theory and statistics, as well as in the study of so-called phenomena exhibiting normal distribution like division. The Fourier transform of a Gaussian function is another Gaussian function. Joseph Fourier introduced the transform in his study of a transfer where Gaussian functions appear as solutions of the heat equation. The Fourier transform can be formally defined as an improper Riemann integral, making it an integral transform. Although this definition is not suitable for many applications requiring a more sophisticated integration theory. For example, many relatively simple applications use the direct delta function, which can be treated formally as if it were a function. But the justification requires a mathematically more sophisticated viewpoint. The Fourier transform can also be generalized to functions of several variables or Euclidean space, sending a function of three dimensional position on space to a function of three dimensional momentum, or a function of space and time to a function of four momentum. This idea makes the special Fourier transform very natural in the study of waves, as well as in quantum mechanics where it is important to be able to represent wave solutions as function of either position or momentum and sometimes both. In general, functions to which Fourier methods are applicable are complex valued and possibly factor valued. Still further generalization is possible to function on groups which besides the original Fourier transform on R or Rn viewed as groups under addition, notably includes the discrete term Fourier transform. DTFT group is equivalent to that. The discrete Fourier transform DFT group is equivalent to Z mod N. And the Fourier series or circular Fourier transform group is equivalent to S raised to 1. The unit cycle approximately closed finite interval with endpoints identified. The latter is routinely employed to handle periodic functions. The first Fourier transform FFT is an algorithm for computing the DFT. The Fourier transform is an extension of the Fourier series, which in its most general form introduces the use of complex exponential functions. For example, for a function affects the amplitude and phase of a frequency, 
component at frequency n on p n in z is given by the complex number c sub n is equivalent to 1 on p integral over p f x e raised to negative i 2 pi n on p x dx. The extension provides a frequency continuum components psi are using an infinite integral of integration. F psi is equivalent to integral from negative infinity to infinity fx e raised to negative i2 pi psi x dx. Here the transform of function fx at frequency psi is denoted by the complex number f psi which is just one of several common conventions. Evaluating the above equation for all values of psi produce the frequency domain function. When the independent variable x represents time, often denoted t, the transform variable psi represents frequency, often denoted f. For example, if time is measured in seconds, then frequency is measured in hertz. A key to interpreting the equation is that the effect of multiplying fx by e raised to negative i2 pi psi x is subtract psi from every frequency component or function fx. So, the component that was at psi ends up at 0 hertz. And the integral produces its amplitude because all the other components are oscillatory and integrate to 0 over an infinite interval. The functions f and f capped are often referred to as a Fourier transform pair. A common notation for designating transform pairs is fx going to f capped psi and therefore let x going to sin c psi. Fourier series cannot represent non-periodic waveforms. However, the Fourier transform is able to represent non-periodic waveforms as well. It achieves this by applying a limiting process to lengthen the period of any waveform to infinity and then treating that as a periodic waveform. The actual Fourier series is a synthesis formula. fx is equivalent to sum of c sub n e raised to i 2 pi n on p x from n being equivalent to negative infinity to infinity. And the Fourier transform extension is fx is equivalent to integral from negative infinity to infinity f capped psi e raised to i 2 pi psi x d psi for all x in r. The complex number f capped psi conveys both amplitude and phase of frequency psi. So the equation is a representation of fx as a weighted summation of complex exponential functions. This is known as the Fourier inversion theorem and was first introduced in Fourier's analytical theory of it, although approved by modern standards, was not given until much later. The Fourier transform on Euclidean space is treated separately, in which the variable x often represents the position and psi momentum. The conventions chosen in this discussion are those of harmonic analysis and are characterized as unique conventions such that the Fourier transform is both unitary on L square and an algebra homomorphism from L1, L raised to 1 to L raised to infinity without renormalizing the Lebesgue measure. Most other characterization of the Fourier transform exist. For example, one uses the Stone von Neumann theorem. The Fourier transform is the unique unitary in the twinner for the symplectic and Euclidean Schrodinger representation of the Heisenberg group. In 1822, Fourier claimed that any function, whether continuous or discontinuous, can be expanded into a series of signs. That work was corrected and expanded upon by others to provide the foundation for the various forms of the Fourier transform used since. For strictly real valued functions, the entire subject of negative frequencies can be avoided as Joseph Fourier did in his original formulation. A negative frequency is represented by a negative value of psi in a Fourier transform. The complex sinusoid e raised to negative i 2 pi 9 x may be called a negative frequency because its transform is non-zero only at a frequency psi is equivalent to negative 9. For the transform of any function, the coefficients f capped psi are complex numbers which have two equivalent forms. f capped psi is equivalent to 
a e raised to i theta the polar coordinate form is equivalent to a cos theta plus i a sin theta the rectangular coordinate form multiplying the coefficients by e raised to i 2 pi x psi we get f capped psi dot e raised to i 2 pi x psi is equivalent to a e raised to i theta dot e raised to i 2 pi x psi is equivalent to a e raised to i 2 pi x psi plus theta which is the polar coordinate form which is also equivalent to a cos 2 pi psi x plus theta plus i a sin 2 pi psi x plus theta which is the rectangular coordinate form Cisco Educational Premium is a section of Cisco Educationals with content that is not hosted here. There are episodes ranging from long to short videos. Remember those good old shots of ours? They are there. So do we get there? Use the link on screen or in the description or in the pinned comment below. Enjoy yourself. Now we'll see you in the next episode of Cisco Educationals.